Hi guys and welcome to another part of the Bonbog uh, project, restoration, what you want to call it. Today I've got the slave cylinder off the Bonbog. Now I wasn't planning on doing this today. Um, I just came out and I thought, oh, I'll just bleed the clutch fluid out because I knew it's been horrible stuff and not coming, well the clutch is slow as anything can gauge. And that happened. I don't know why it's stuck this time. The last time I did this, the the bleed screw came loose and worked fine. And this time it's just seized in. So, right, I was away to take it off, so I thought I'll take it off to sort it. And this obviously came out. And then I noticed how much rubbish is in the end of the rubber. So, I'm going to do a short video stripping this to bits and see what it actually is like. If it's going to be quite a messy job to do, since I'm not in the workshop gear as such, I will redo this, well, not redo, continue this video once I'm in overall so I don't get a mess. Because I don't want to get a mess of the new Bond Bug jumper I've got. So yeah, I'm going to go and see how this goes. I'll zip up this. And I'll go and get a container to put the bits for this in. We'll see what comes to part. Right, so here's the slave cylinder. Excuse the mess on the bench. We'll actually get rid of some of this just now. Some of these are tools I just had to use to get the, the cylinder off the bug. Some of these are tools I had used yesterday on the Super Robin and just haven't had a chance to get them tidied up again. So get rid of that. Ah, test that. Put it away. Vice grips, that. I'll need this later again, so keep a hold of that. Another shell. Hammers here. That put it away. This does belong in that drawer, but I'm going to leave it out just now. So, anyway, first bit out, clutch push rod, which is actually twisted and bent out of shape. So, I'll have to straighten that out. Second bit, the rubber. I'm not sure what to expect they'll be in here. Oh, that's crusty. There's also a washer I just came off the back of it. That's for the brake pipe. I put it in there as well. Yeah, this is actually full of... Mmm. Uh, mmm, lovely. Crystallated brake fluid. That's probably not a... It also probably means that the seal kit I bought, that I didn't think I would need, I probably will need. I don't know, I mean, have a look inside there, it's absolutely vile. Oh, crikey. What's that I found at the top? It's a slave. That's just the pin to stop the piston coming out, and the piston's miles down. So, because it was adjusted up for this, I have a feeling this has been a problem in the past that's never been sorted. There we go. That's the clip out. Weird kind of one. And that piston is absolutely yarded full of rubbish. Let's get a good look at it. I'll make sure you can see. Um, it might help if I do this. Just totally yarded full of rubbish. So I'll use this as it's at hand. That is disgusting. So this has been leaking for years. I actually bought a refab kit for the Bond Bugs hydraulic system. And I thought originally I wouldn't need it because the clutch was working, I just thought it was old brake fluid. It's actually down to the fact that this, this whole lot has just been ref, refurbished. So let's see if we can get this piston to come out. It is moving. That's a good start. It's 
knew it, the top actually. Need more of a screwdriver just to clean it up again. That is really mean. Right, another couple of taps should do it. There we go, I nearly at the top. I'll put it in this and pop it down the way cylinder. Oh lovely. Oh now the fluid comes out of it. Nothing came out of it earlier when I checked it and now we've got a heap coming out. I'd say that's a majority of my problems. I'll set that in there. In fact before it goes into there I'm gonna give it a quick brake clean. Instead of having brake fluid everywhere. Cylinder is foul. And how that's been working, I do not know. It's still, even after I clean, it's still black, so it's needing a good, I'll just scotch bright it clean. And look at it. Let's see if I can get some of the dirt out that side of it. Better. Not in there. Overall, the barrel's not bad, it's just need a clean. Although I need to get that bone end brake there. Yeah. Get the brake bleed nipple out of it, which is obviously broken into it. So I'll give this a quick clean out with this just now, just to get rid of the brake fluid that's left in it. And it's brake and clutch cleaner I just sprayed in to get it cleaned up a bit. Yeah, it's gonna need a clean. Right, I'll see if we can get this blown in bleed nipple out. I think I'm going to heat it up and use a little stud remover, oh, one of these tools, can't find the right name for them now. They'll come back to me long after I've done this video probably, that one fits. So we'll use that, we'll give it a heat, aluminium will heat up quicker than the steel. So hopefully that means I can get that annoying broken thing out of there. Oh, do we hear the smaller ones here? Smaller ones are here. Big ones are great for doing a lot of jobs, but for this kind of job, I think the smaller ones are more than su sufficient. I'll turn that around, turn it that way. Feels more comfortable working it. That's tight in there. Now I don't have a lot of gas in this today, so let's see how this goes. Definitely don't want to do is snap that uh, casting in there because I've done that before and they're an absolute nightmare when you snap it. There's no easy way of getting that out. I 
this extractor tool is supposed to be as hard as nails really. I was deliberately drunk by the way. We got stuck in a hand. It's obviously going to be a challenge to get out this, but I might have to come back to it. When you're using these, you, by the way, you always want to use the tip of the blue. See the inner blue flame, the lighter blue? You just want that tip to be where you're heating. It's the hottest point of the flame. I'm really surprised this is seized in, because I did get it moving. Should have, should move. thing I seem to manage to do is I've got the, the bit to go further into the bleed nipple. What I hate about the smaller ones because they're not good to... Okay, I have broken one of these in a tool before. That one's actually not far away from breaking. So that wouldn't have been a bad option twisting that much more. I mean, ideally I would have rather had a slightly bigger one fitting into it. That's a smaller size. I don't think it's going to be any better. No, I don't want to try that. The only other way I've done these, and this fails, is I have bored them out before. But that's a, one of those jobs that is not good to do, and it's an absolute nightmare if it goes wrong. What I'll do is I'll try the obvious one. Which I don't think this will work, because it's too, no, too narrow to get into it. To get that out, I did the centre drill it for trampoline, the, the hole for the bleed nipple is there. So that part would still a problem. But I'd have to drill it, which the drill isn't here just now. One, two, maybe three or four times to get it up to the size I need to get to. And then it should be able to come out. Um, the drill kit is here. got this kit here which leads I'm just checking the camera was still coming on the so I've got one there the only problem with that one is it just went to spin off there's no going back when you do the drill and out method by the way you will just have to drill it out until it's gone but I tend to drill it till it's just smaller than the further threads is and I use a pick to tap it out, which if I can get a drill, which I should have one here, but I found one, to be able to see how this works. This isn't the best of drills, by the way. Right. Always make sure you're going the right direction. That's me 
through that bleed nipple, but not into the aluminium. And that's where you want to be. Um, while I'm here, I'm just gonna check. The next size up for this is probably far too big to drill it and be able to use it. Yeah, it's about falling to bits by the time you've done that. So we've done one. Now I'll jump up to a six. So it's the next size I've got in my box. Making sure it's falling the right way. It is falling the right way. You usually know when you've got to the same point you're drawing as the last one. The tone does change. It's slightly deeper than it needs to be. Sounds about it. Not far off it anyway. Sometimes worthwhile just Yeah, I can see the aluminium appearing just at the bottom of that. This was the next size up, which as you see probably won't do anything. There's less chance of snapping this than there was the littler one. As you can see there, it just spins because it, it can't get deep enough into it to grab a hold of the, the bleed nipple. So, that was a 6. We'll go for a 6.5. Which will probably get rid of the top bar. to remember is always well. if you get this into the aluminium it will draw a lot quicker and you don't want to do that this kit's no more more used to me because it jumps up to 10 but I can't use a 10 it can just destroy everything so I'll go to this one this is missing quite a lot of bits but it's got the sizes upwards from the, the six and a half which is not used this is seven and a half. As you can hear there, that's going down again. While well, you're drawing these out, always, always, always check you're not going too far. As I can see there... Right, I had a slight interruption of the phone call came through. So here we go. I'm up to, I believe that was a 7.5 I drilled to. Now I'm just going to see if this prize is out now. Or if it needs to be weakened out more to let the... the uh, so the bleed nipple will just break away through the thread. What I'll do is I'll get my pick. I think I can just use this one actually. Sometimes a little screwdriver does help better than your pick. I don't like chopping screwdrivers either, but... I think 
we'll try and get that another size up if we can. Eight. Eight should still fit down there. I get the pickles too. Now I'm not a fan of using these as punches or chisels, but I'm a fan of this getting the job done and not breaking something. So in this case covers all the criteria for being able to use it for something it's not been made for. Now I will stress this will damage slightly but a bit of the thread. But I'm planning on running a thread cleaning tool down this once it's out. So it's not out yet. There's big chunks of it coming out. And the threads are starting to appear. And I'm going to turn that round because I can see better with pointing that direction. The thread cleaner will be doing this and just clean out all the to the thread, I don't know. There's another big, nice big chunk of thread just came out of there. A thread, bleeding the bleeding. So, it's slowly coming out. It is just one of these jobs you just have to gently work at it until the thing eventually comes to bits. That just helps a bit. It's not as good to get hold of this thing though. The last one I did was in a, a Super Vans brake cylinders. Now there we go. That's a bit better. A bigger chunk. Ideally, what to do is get it all the way down until it gets to the getting this one started is the problem. One side's come out, the other side's decided it quite likes being in the barrel stuck in the threads even. See the thread cleaning tool I'll be using, I want you to see it, is this one. 5 eighths UNF, oh no, wrong one, it's the 3 eighths. So this is the one I'll be using, 3 eighths UNF. That's all it'll do. Go down and clean the threads out. As you see there, once you get started with it, it's not a problem. Might be this one a little turn down to see if we can help some of the dirt into it in this way. Looking compact. 
Some... So what we want to do, you see, is get that. There's a little bit stuck in the thread at one side. I can see it. Just getting onto it's the problem. I think I'll draw, draw this a little bit further with a seven and a half. That's the bottom of the bleed nipple loose now. At least it gets it out of the way. As you can see, it's quite a mind-numbing job trying to remove these little bits because they always do come back to be a nuisance. That's the edge of one of them. Yep, there we go. That's one of them out. I might be able to force that thread out of there using the uh, thread tool because this will just go down and hopefully make the old rubbish thread just drop out into the, where the bleed nipple's sitting or where the bleed nipple was. This went down further this time, anyway. Threads are looking quite good as well. I would say that's done it. As there was with other bits, there's some rubbish in the bottom of it. That's it. All the way in by hand, no problem. So we'll try the oh. give the one a quick try. Fantastic. Came out brilliant. Well, that's ready for me to rebuild it, which I'll be doing later on because I have to go and do a little job just now. So, this will be continued later on in the day. Unfortunately, 
This isn't for a bone box. It's for a Triumph, I believe. A TR2. It should have a locked master cylinder. That's a girl in 313340. So it's no use. So I've ordered a bone bug one that will it's brand new. And I'll just have a spare refurb kit for the original bone bug cylinder, which should fit the new one. So what I'm going to do is because I think the master cylinder is sticky, I mean that's fully out this time. Last time I tried it, it was the last time I tried that it wouldn't even go well, it was stuck down. So rather than struggle trying to get into there, I'm gonna take off this one and the plate with the pedals and just take the whole assembly out. I believe the brake one is in there. It must it goes down below there and yeah it's down into there. So I should be able to get into them once I get it moved a bit. And we'll see how it goes. The brake let's see if I can see the brake pipe one. The brake pipe one's on the top. So we'll probably just take off the put that up there before I forget it. We'll probably just remove these four bolts, take the plate off, undo the bolts for the master cylinders, and get them mobile. So let me just have a quick look because I'm not actually familiar with myself with this at all. Right, so there's two bolts below. We'll start with them. Once I first two up top and bottom. Yeah, there is. So they're all top and bottom bolts. So I should have the spanners not. What I'll probably do is I'll stick it on a time lapse for this one. Because it'll take a bit of me getting used to it to work out how it all comes to part. And we'll see how it goes and I'll bring this back on once this is off the bug. guys so once the master cylinder is both off unfortunately the brake pipe of the brake cylinder snapped so it's gonna have to be changed but uh, the rest of it's lying there it just wheels out so easily when it's not supposed to I'm just gonna put this with the brake pipe in the car so I know where it is way it just keeps all the parts together so first one I think I'll do we'll do the brake because this is the one I really want to get into um, mainly because I've got the refurb kit for the clutch the brake lists two and you need to take it to bits to find out which one you actually need so let's see if I can get this pins all out let's see if I can get the thing to bits Right, that. Let's see if we can straighten these. Gotta love an easy job. one. That'll come out the way. So what I'll do with this is I'll go and get a tub for this bit. That's fine easy. I've actually got a tub right here. So that's 
too. That's that bit. This one I won't touch just now. Next stage is to get these two bolts out. Ring spanner again. So then you have to still drop the spanner without getting any pressure on it. Right. Now this cup is just for the master cylinder for the brakes. I do know these are the original ones, unlike the slave, because they're both lock heads stamped on them. If I'm correct, one of them is identical to the kitten. Or similar, I believe it might be. No, similar, sorry. It's not identical to the kitten. Could be wrong with both things I just said there, but one of them could be right, and that's always a good start. So I'll take this one off. We're definitely going to be giving the threads on this a clean because this is quite tough to remove. There we go, that's that off. Let's give it a little. Ooh. Well, this one's leaking fluid, as if you can see from in there. I'll put on my head torch so you can see it easier. See all the leaks in there? So that definitely needs changed. Um, so that's on my list to sort now. So we'll do that one first. I will take off this one just now as well. But we won't do anything more with it until I finish the brake. Well, I've straightened the circle, it always seems to be a pest when we don't want it to be. I was actually quite lucky, there was one of these on the scimitar, quite awkward to get to. And I was very happy when it just turned around and swiveled off without any issues. I was like, yes! an easy one. The only thing easy there was. There we go. Right, I'll go and get another top. So this is for the clutch parts, the bigger one. Right, I think when this is all off, I might give this a buff up and a clean and a bit of paint. Looks like it could be doing it. What I'm going to do is take that off because I don't like that being in there. It's just asking to be broken. It'd be interesting to see if this will turn without turning the pipe. No. So this would have suffered the same fate as the brake one. If I'd tried to take it off of there. But fear not, I will work. We will either replace this with another one or I will get that freed off and cleaned up. So that into there. Then, once again, one of those. Into that one. And I hope you can still see it. Yeah. One of those up to that one. So that's removing the mountain bolts. And then I'll just put the brake master cylinder for the clutch and the pail and it can stay there until we're ready to do it. I've never worked on a one of these styles of master cylinders so I'm quite curious to see inside one of them. Only ones I've rebuilt up to date are the style that's on the Super Van and Robins, which are the Garling uh, 5 8 and 3 8 master cylinders. I did the Regal as well, actually, which was the same, same master cylinder as the van, though. Nearly, there we go. That's that one out. That's the pedal box, the same disassembled. Let's have a look inside. This one before I put it in there. Oh, that was a good one. 
I did think it was better condition. No damage in there. It's a nice clean. So that's probably not going to be a bad master solder. See if anyone comes out with it still. With some brake fluid still on it. It's all be getting fresh fluid in it. I'll just make sure. I would quite safely say this is not going to be causing us any problems in the future. Just the piston's actually working spot on there like it should. I think the problem's been in the pipes. So we'll put that in there so it's nice and safe out of the way. And I'm going to put this in the bod bog for the moment. Now we need to get this master cylinder to bits. I've never done this before. Well, we're one of these style, as I've said. So the first thing I think I'll do is, I'm gonna get the little side pick. I did see one of them here earlier. Maybe not, it was the straight one I seen that I used. And we'll clean off this rubbish that's inside the housing. So far it's been leaking brake flu fluid. I did suspect this one was going to be a problem because I seen marks when I was looking inside it. I thought it was on the car. Looks like this is a circlip. Yep, it's a circlip on this one. That vice is brilliant at popping the bolus with open. Right, try this one. We'll see if it releases it anyway. I can tell by the way this one is, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to work on. Right, I'll try some brake cleaner on it, see if I can clean out some of See if I can see what I'm doing better. Right. You can kind of see now. It's out. Or half out, should we say. There it comes. That's it out. And I haven't got the piston out yet, but if you look at that, you can see how all the fluid's just been leaking past there and it's been sitting in. Gathering, it looks minging. So that's that bit. Right. No time for the piston. I'll have to see that I've got all the brake fluid out of here first. Still some in it. It doesn't look great still. It does look quite horrible. And I expect there will be more comes out of here when I do this. So that's that. Now if I know these correctly, a couple of taps, and there it is. Whoop, a lot of bright fluid. Now this is what I need to know to kind of order the right kit or not. Was that? Because there's two styles. And there's the other piston. There's two in this one actually. So I'll have to get the other one out now. It's coming.
there's one two bits of it so that's just wedged between there by the looks of that that's just the spring that's left in there which i'm surprised didn't come out so I'll have to get this long nose pliers and try and pull it It's not going to work. There's a bit of now well, that doesn't want to come out. Which, I mean, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Slight, slight sticky line at the top of the slave cylinder. The rest of it's good. I think if we get away with leaving that in there anyway. If that's all the seal there, yeah, it should be fine. Um, I'll try a little pick on it, see if I can pull it out. It'd be nice to hear it all out in one piece. That way it's easier to see the whole thing in its entirety. There we go. Oh, there's another seal look. So there we go. The entirety of the inside of the master cylinder. So I need to order a kit that looks like that. See if I can give that a clean. So it said in the book when I read up about these, there's two styles. One of them is an earlier style, and one of them is a later. So I'd be quite happy saying that's one of the the two, hopefully. Which means I can then order the kit. So that I will. Just leave as it is till I get a photo of it. And this one, we'll just give it a quick. In fact, we'll do. No, I can't do that because I don't have the the drill that I normally use for doing this. I'll drill it works a lot better than this technique. So you use the drill, you can make it high speed and get it nice and clean. So that will be all I'm doing with that one just now. What I'll do is I'm going to stop this video. Now video. I'm going to put the master cylinder into that tub probably just out the road, and I'm going to get a photo of this so I know how it goes back together. Then we'll have a look at the clutch. This one should have the clutch here. Although, going by what it looks like in there, it might not be needed. So, we'll unpin this. Is that one out? Is that one? Oh no, maybe we all need it. It's not like passed out or one, but the inside. Oh! It's a lot easier to come to bits this piston as it's just shot half the piston out. But anyway, it still looks like it's going to need seals, so that's fine. We've got the kit here for it. So I'll put this in there. Pull out that. Similar style again to the master cylinder on the brake system. I'll just check there's no more fluid in it. Ooh. Where did all that come from? I already emptied this on the car. That is filthy, that is black, that brake fluid. Right, 
So we've done that bit. Looks like it's the exact same setup. We can get this bit out. This is just a piece of rubber now, I know, so. Because I know that now, I can actually just pick it out. That wasn't the plan of pushing it back in upside down. There we go. There's the rubber out. This is pretty worn actually. So same two positions. That probably won't come out itself, so in with the pick again. Hook the spring. Pull it out. It's the exact same setup again. So that should be simple. And we should have the kit for that. So we'll give this a quick spray. So that's that, we're going to clean. What I'll have to do again is, I'll have to stop filming this to take another photo so I know that this is how this one goes together. And I'll go and look out the kit and check that it's the same kit. And then hopefully we can put something either together this time or it'll be when I get the kit for the brake cylinder. We'll do them both in a video. But I'll go and take some photos and we'll see if it matches. So I believe this is the master cylinder kit, the CC, I need to double check the numbers anyway first. So this is what I've got in this kit, it's a little seal, should be right for there. A washer, end of spring one, that actually looks like the right kit. What flag that battery just gave me? Right. We've got hard rubber seal, bigger one, so we've got one, ah oh, wait a minute, I might just open this to double check, my scissors are somewhere nearby. It's always better double checking these instead of waiting to the day and then realizing you have the wrong kit. Right, so we've got that one for the end of the spring, that's from over there, so we know those two. This would be that cap, which it is, and we've got that one from there, which is right, and this would be the replacement washer for there. We've got this kit and it's here. So the clutch sided system can be rebuilt easily enough. So I will not do that today. It will be saved for the next video when I get the brake cylinder kit. So we can do them both at the same time. So I'll just adjust this camera. My tripod's getting worse and worse by the day. So guys, for that, that's it for this time on the Bone Bog Restoration Project. Um, as you know, next time hopefully we'll be rebuilding these master cylinders so they'll work. I'll have to go and order the correct kit for the brake cylinder now. And we'll take it from there and see how everything comes together. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have, remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to keep up to date with all the latest videos and the Regal, the Supervan, the Bond Bog, the Scimitar, and any updating up upcoming projects even like the kitten um, remember to hit the bell button so you can keep up to date with it so i hope you enjoyed it and until next time we'll see you again